church to our church online experience we are so glad that you made time to be part of this even as we get into a time of worship today i want to just look at one verse from the book of psalms psalm 103 verse 1 and 2 this is what it says oh my soul bless god from head to toe i'll bless his holy name oh my soul bless god don't forget a single blessing even as you get into god's presence can i just ask that you would come in with a grateful heart maybe you can't see a blessings that are overwhelmingly prominent but the very fact that you are alive breathing and able to sit before your screen this evening is an evidence of his goodness so would you get into his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with joy let's worship god together more than excited to do this one more time another week another new day and uh, we are excited to come together and worship and i feel it would be the same for you as well but today if there's any death situations in our life that we've been trying to resurrect in our own strength as we worship we're going to rely on jesus because he is able he is able to and we're going to cast all our worries anxieties pressures of this world pressures of work pressures of family everything at his feet in exchange of peace in exchange of all those death situations coming alive in the name of Jesus and as we sing these songs i pray that hope would arise wherever we are wherever we are come join us as we sing these songs and as we worship him and as we praise him may god dwell among us How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountains I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into forever Jesus Christ my living 
you're our living hope lord jesus or till we te- till we see you face to face lord father you're our hope you're our only hope even as we sing the last verse i encourage you because his word says without him there is no hope without him we can't enter into heaven these are things which are not theories but as we worship him and as we lift our praises as we lift our worship to him as he dwell in us and he and as we seek more of his presence even as we sing these songs and as we worship him with a heart yearning for his presence yearning for his fellowship and as we ask him he would reveal things to us he would reveal things to us and our prayer and my prayer now is as we sing this last verse of this song it has been sealed once and for all so there's nothing that he can't revive jesus then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory powerful who has all the strength to bring dead things alive Lord Jesus because you resurrected from that grave Lord Jesus and you sealed it once and for all Lord Father and we believe and we know Lord Jesus that you dwell among us and that's the confidence that we have that you would never leave us nor you forsake us lord jesus and with that confidence that he is there with us through the storm through the through our anxieties he is there with that confidence can we sing i have a maker jesus Amen. He 
transformed my heart before even time began my life was in his hand oh he knows my name my every thought he sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call I have a father he calls me his own call him for today because as we sang our God knows our God sees and our God hears so there's nothing hidden from his sight but what do we ask him what do we ask him for today can we ask him Lord can all these situations which seem so dry it seems so dead that relationship Lord Father can you breathe into it Lord Jesus those areas that I struggle with Lord Father can you breathe into it Lord Jesus I need you Lord Father in my singleness I need you in my family I need you in my parenting I need you in my studies I need you in my work I need you Lord Jesus but whatever seems so dry mundane lost dead can we ask Lord would you breathe into it Lord Jesus even as we sing believe with all your heart miracles do happen miracles do happen things change things do change because he's a miracle worker he makes ways where we cannot see it right that's our God because he knows in and out of about everything about us he knows he sees he hears and he's still at work doing miracles what do you ask him for today
this song today Lord Father we pray Lord Jesus that you would reveal yourself as we fix our eyes on heaven Lord 
most of the times we come to you seeing your hands lord father but but i pray with each and every one of them who's joined in this lord father who's listening to this lord father we join with every one of them lord father and we pray lord jesus that we would seek your face and all these miracles will follow lord father help us to worship you in truth and in spirit may our worship be considerable in your sight continue to lead us through in jesus name we pray Holy God we just thank you we praise you for who you are and what you have done we thank you for bringing us into yet another year we thankful for 2024 the promise of this year we thank you lord for you are going ahead of us we thank you that we are not alone for you have promised to never leave us nor forsake us and even lord as we get into this time of worship and the word Lord even as we allow your presence to wash over us i pray that you will minister to us in the deepest places of our unspoken need father i pray right now for healing upon minds healing upon bodies healing lord upon relationships father we pray for wisdom to flood your children's hearts and lives help us to live well help us to lead well help us lord to model uh, to our children that which you want us to model father we pray that you would help us lord i pray very specially for nations of the earth where there is so much of struggle and strife we just pray that the peace that passes all understanding would rest in these places father we pray for leaders to have your wisdom uh, a wisdom that is from heaven divine uh, leading to do that which is good for their people Lord we just pray right now for our nation of India we just pray that you will bless every leader bless every plan and purpose we pray as we head into elections this year that God your perfect plan and will will be done we thank you for you have already uh, seen the outcomes and that Lord you are holding our nation we thank you Father we praise you Father for what you are doing in our churches at this time and we pray that churches will experience a holy spirit revival we pray that Lord you will send your fire upon us to strengthen us Lord to prepare us to prepare us and our hearts Lord for your return continue to work in us continue to work in our midst Lord go before us Help us Lord to do the things you have marked for us to do. Help us to live lives that are set apart for you. Help us Lord to live consecrated lives. We need your help. We cannot do it without you, Father. We pray that you would continue to move in this place. We love you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Church as you know, we have started a new series for the entire year called Set Apart. And last week we looked at how God sets us apart from even before we were born and today we're going to be looking um at another aspect of how we are set apart by God and I pray that as you sit to listen that you would really come before God with a with humility and a readiness to receive what he's going to say to you can we listen to God's word together you are chosen yes you have been selected and called you have been hand picked by the father to be consecrated for his use you have been marked by christ for purposes bigger than you imagine you have been elected by the holy spirit to bear witness to all that god has done is doing and will do in the future the question is no longer knowing that you are chosen It's whether you will live in a way that sets you apart. Will you say yes to the purifying process? Will you yield yourself to the mighty hand of God? Will you come in agreement to the will of God? Will you take a bold stand for Christ when confronted by the world? Will you follow him even if it means you get unfollowed? Will you choose holiness over popularity and faithfulness over success? Will you allow God to call you out, pick you up and place you on another level so that you live a life 
that is set apart. Hi Church, it's such a joy and a privilege to be bringing God's Word to you today. Even as we've stepped into 2024, you know, in the second Sunday of the year, uh, I believe you've started your new year uh, with God at the center. Even as we heard uh, in the New Year Eve service of uh, the entire theme for this year for our church is set apart. And even for those of you who are listening right now, uh, even as we heard last week that we are set apart by God, uh, today, we're going to go into the third part of this entire series, and it's called Set Apart by Jesus. And I wanted us to realize that uh, Jesus came into this world. He was set apart exclusively to fulfill God's plan and purpose for us. And today, you and me as followers of Jesus have a unique plan that we have to fulfill here on this earth. Yes, we are called to live in this world. We've heard those verses. We've called to be the salt and light. We are called to go ahead in this pathway of accomplishing all that he sets out to do in and through us. But he has a unique plan and purpose for us. You know, we can either be, as we saw in the New Year Eve, some of those Christians who are lukewarm, where we just come for the sake of being called a Christian or probably we enjoy certain perks of being a Christian. But he wants us to fulfill the ultimate call and uh, purpose that he has in store for us as followers of Jesus. And so today, even as we move through this entire uh, third part, I want us to have our hearts open. Because many a times, us being set apart is not what, even as I preach, even as I have bringing out certain scriptures that I've meditated on, it's something that he does in and through us. And we need to come to that realization. Oftentimes, God uses the spoken word of God from a sermon. God uses uh, people to speak in and through us. But many a times, the real Christian work that happens in and through our life, the one that God really is getting his hands in and through us, is when we meditate on his word day and night. When we allow room in our life for more of him. And so today, I just want us to go back to this familiar scripture that we've read from John chapter 3, verse 16. A lot of us, by heart, that verse. But the intensity and the weight of that verse is so heavy. And I want to read it from the message version. And this is what it says. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed by believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind son of God when introduced to him. One of a kind son of God. So when Jesus came into this world, he walked the very earth that you and I are walking. He lived in the very circumstances that you and I are living in. He was judged by the very uh, humans that we are surrounded by. He uh, was a carpenter. He was a carpenter's son. He had a trade in his hand. Yet he chose to do the will of the father. His parents knew why he had come down to earth. And today, the reason why he came down to earth was for you and me. He died for you and me. He was sent down by God so that he can fulfill and bridge that gap for us. So that God wouldn't accuse us. God saw the entirety of the Old Testament we see time and again. He set apart a nation, but the nation didn't want him. He set apart a few remnant from that. But time and again, they kept faltering. They went into slavery. They went into captivity. He brought them back to the promised land. He held them, but he knew he the world needed a redeemer for entirety of mankind. He just didn't come for one group of people. He came for the entirety of mankind. And so what does it look to be set apart by Jesus? There's something unique about Jesus walking this earth. He walked where you and I walked, but he touched the people that came in his lane. Everyone who came in his path, he touched. He called a few. He walked alongside them for three and a half years. And at the end of the day, when they get commissioned to go fulfill the great commission, they just didn't go empty handed. They went knowing that God was with them. 
And so today, when he sets us apart, there's a clear marking that happens. If you and I have to come to the baseline of our Christian faith, we acknowledge that we are sinners, that we are sin by birth. Because Adam, who sinned, we all are sinners. So there is dirt. No shirt is clean if you wear it. There is markings of sin. We all have woundings of sin. We've carried it through so many aspects of life. But God here is saying, hey, I am marking you. Jesus, when he meets with us, marks us. Every Christian who's encountered Jesus, who's accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, came across an exchange that happened the day they invited Jesus into their heart. And even as I was preparing, I uh, was reminded of what a stencil looked like. A stencil is basically a set pattern that's cut out. And then you mark around it, you color it, you do it. But the end result, the paper has a marking. You are marked. When Jesus came, he marked us out. He no longer gave sin the final world. Even though our entire creation is one of sin when we enter into this world, because we've accepted Jesus, he starts marking us. And the longer we journey with him, the more markings we get all over. So much that till we meet him face to face, we are clothed with a new robe. And so one of the things which I, as I was reading up on stencil and the history of how it originated, I came across through this entire method through which uh, print uh, is done. It's called screen printing, where they have an entire uh, silk cloth and it's and it's cut out to the impression that's needed and then later add ink and then they rub through it and then there's an impression where they beat on paper whatever surface we lay underneath gets that impression this is what it says the greater the number of threads the more detailed the print will be the mesh is formed by interwoven threads that can vary in number and i believe as we journey with jesus in a closer walk with him each and every day as we live out the life that jesus has called for us He's interwoven into us and our design becomes more intricate, more intricate because of him. So today, as you and I are being set apart by Jesus, there are a few things that we are called, that we are stenciled, that we are screen printed by Jesus. And I wanted to leave three things with you. The first thing is we are set apart because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about this as how the high priest laid himself down for us. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when the sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. Jesus, once and for all, wanted to put an end to sacrifices. He wanted to put an end to bloodshed. He wanted. He said, you know what, I'm sacrificing my one and only son and that's it. That's the done deal. So today, if it was not for Jesus, there is no hope. So, which means I need to invite Jesus into every area of my life. Jesus' sacrifice cleanses us from all sin. Jesus' sacrifice stood in my behalf and substituted, he substituted himself for me. Which means everything I go through, he's willing to stencil. He's willing to just allow himself to be on top and say, I have covered it all. And so today I want us to come, as I said in the New Year service, I said that was for the church. But today as we look at it individually, can we allow Jesus into every area of our lives? We are set apart because of Jesus. Once and for all, he's paid the price, which means I need to come 
in acceptance and say, Jesus, because you've paid the price, I'm willing to take a step and allow you to set me apart in this. Today, I want us to take it much deeper. What area of my life does Jesus need to come in and set me apart? Today, it can be in the area of my unbelief. Today, it can be in the area of me being skeptic, being questioning. Jesus, uh, would you, would, would it, was it possible for you to heal something as emotional as this is? I've been carrying this emotional baggage far too long. I've been beating myself up because people have hurt me, because people have spoken this over me, because circumstances caused this. I shouldn't have been in that room and that bad touch happened. I am struggling, Jesus. He's saying, I understand your pain. That sin does not have to mark you. You do not have to be defined by what those terms say. You are my child. And the beautiful thing is Jesus took that place, which means, if, you know, we, we, we today have termed every, every action that we can think of has been termed with a particular term. Compulsive disorder, that disorder, that disorder. He's saying, can I step in? Because when I step in, every disorder will become an orderly thing. And today, a lot of us are struggling with so many closed doors because we've not allowed Jesus to step into that. And he's saying, I came to set apart. I came so that there'll be a clear demarcation. He will not have the final word. Satan will not have the final word. I offered myself as the sacrifice that day. Stop beating yourself. A lot of us are living the consequences of our sin. When we are saying we're living, we're living because okay, we've done something wrong. We are uh, have to live out the consequences of that. But we don't have to live under the bondage of it. Which means that does not mark. If we go to Jesus for forgiveness, he's saying, I will forgive you. Verse 17, it says, I will never again remember it. He will give you hope. He will allow you to stand on the promises. We won't need to be bogged down. God saying, I will liberate you. You don't have to go around saying, you know what, I'm set free because of that medicine, because of that counselor, because of that thing. All that is add-ons. You need to first say, I am set apart because of Jesus. When he sets you apart, there's something that marks you inside out. And there's something that marks you inside out. Even as I mentioned earlier on, when I said the screen printing, we see it happen internally. That's just a reference. But what I see Jesus doing is he first works in us before it's revealed out of us. And today, what he wants to set us apart, we need to open our mouth and confess and say, Jesus, I'm set apart because of you. I'm not set apart because of my family. I'm not set apart because of my family name. I'm not set apart because I'm so-and-so's granddaughter. You know, I'm so-and-so's minister's son or I'm so-and-so pastor's son or I'm so-and-so. No, I'm set apart because of Jesus. Because I personally had that encounter with him. I need to go to Jesus and say, God, I want to have that encounter again. God, this sin is creeping up time and again, but I want you to come and set me apart. We will be set apart only because of Jesus. Remember, his love was too much that he said, I will give my son. He'll walk on this earth. The sinless man walked on this earth. He who knew no sin died on our behalf and he's setting us free. Because of Jesus, we have a healthy understanding of the fear of God. We see through Jesus' life and his teaching in Matthew 7, he talks about the narrow road and the broad road. And this is what it says. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway of hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who choose the way. But the gateway of life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. One of the beautiful things when you're set apart because of Jesus is you identify the narrow gate. You identify the narrow gate and you realize that there are many who are also following Jesus. And the attraction of the broad limits you. Yeah, there are areas which you feel like, God, if I'm in that, I can enjoy certain benefits. But you start understanding because of Jesus, there is far more bigger things that he's calling me to do. God will 
start speaking to you specifically of what he wants you to be set apart decisions would not just come randomly it won't just happen because of a spur of the moment it will come intentionally because of the word of god it will come because of the prayer that you've been praying it probably will come because of a deep conviction so today if anyone asks you you should be bold enough to stand by that conviction and say i am set apart because my god has set me apart daniel and his three friends didn't give a big explanation they didn't give their agenda of why they were set apart when the food was offered they just said you know what this is not the food that we can eat just give us this it's god who blesses everything so today what is it that god's calling you to be set apart because it will not be by your own strength jesus relied on the father when he was on this earth we rely on the father to through jesus his son we are set apart because of jesus i pray that we will be conscious we will allow his words to seep right into our hearts that the narrow way we wouldn't just look at the the space that we don't have to operate but we look at the one who's calling in front of us a lot of us love our spaces so the broad road seems comfortable but i believe the narrow way is where we do community the narrow way is where we understand what suffering is the narrow way is where we seek provision in the lack the narrow way is where we see the supernatural work of god the narrow way is where we see gratitude move things mightily so much that it becomes a testimony so can we be set apart because of jesus the second thing is we are set apart through jesus so no longer do we have to go and offer sacrifices because the high priest himself came down and laid his life for us we now are set apart through jesus the fundamentals of christian faith are in two aspects let's read from galatians chapter 2 verses 19 to 21 this is what it says what actually took place is this i tried keeping rules and working my head off to please god and it didn't work so i quit being a law man so that i could be god's man Christ life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It's no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion and I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not going to go back on that. And the reason why I've chosen this passage are two things. It says Christ lives in me. Christ showed me how and enabled me to do it. So when you allow Jesus to work in and through you when he sets us we are set apart through Jesus we realize there's a cost involved. It's not uh you know it's not a no cost uh thing that we get from Jesus there is a cost involved what is that cost we see two things two fundamental things of our christian faith as i mentioned earlier one his blood the second is resurrection his blood we understand that we are set apart through his blood so which means every time god causes us to set something apart it costs us it costs god to lay down his life and so today when we set up our when we say god because of you because of you working in through me because my ego is not in play and i'm wanting to do what satisfies you and what you know pleases you it will cost you the second thing as a thing we see is jesus resurrection power is what we see uh, one of the fundamentals of our christian faith his resurrection power will work in and through us areas where we thought we were weak his resurrection power will come and make us strong areas which we were struggling to overcome we will see his resurrection power come and we will overcome that we will be dead to sin we will be made alive in christ so no longer will we gratify things that that we need that i want that you know that works well for me no we will start working and doing things that will work well for him and what will work well for him is uh, the the passage which jesus talks in the new testament when he's here is if you love god you will love people if you love god you will love his community 
If you love him, you will do what he wants in the midst of the people that he's placed you. A lot of times we come to a place of wanting everything done for ourselves. But when we allow Jesus to be to be working in and through us, one of the beautiful things about um, working through us is he comes into us and he finds another way to exit out, which means the word we receive from him works in and it departs out of us so that it can bless someone else. I believe that's how. For me, when I was uh, writing this point, I was just uh, reminded of the Marvel character vision where he walks through doors. He doesn't break the door. He just walks through it. And I believe when we allow, when we are set apart through Christ, his word will work in us and it will go through us out so that it blesses someone else. Because the evidence of that will be seen in other people's life. The ego that Jesus Christ is killing in and through us, we, the people will start seeing it as his characteristics through our lives. So today, it will be no longer that we live out of our old selfish uh, needs, but it will be Christ who lives in us. Romans talks about this and it says, My old self has been crucified with Christ in verse 20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Verse 21, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. One of the beautiful examples we see of Jesus talking about the standards that he came outside of the law when he started talking. He said, you know what, you don't have to commit adultery. Even if you look at a woman in a lustful way, you've committed adultery. He stepped up everything, what the Lord demanded of us to a place where we can't do it and we need him. That's what we need to allow Jesus to work in and through us. When we are set apart, He's working in and through us. Our ego is getting killed. Our, 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 our physical wants are getting killed. We, we start realizing, God, I have so many selfish motives. Everything gets killed. And we come and we are made alive in Christ. In Romans, we read uh, verses uh, chapter 6 and it says in verse 10, When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. A lot of times we give sin extra power by declaring that it's tough, by declaring that we are struggling, it's difficult to give up. No, sin does not have the power over us. Jesus has if we want to be set apart by Jesus. So today, I don't know what sin that we all are going through. But will we come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you for once, because of your precious blood, defeated sin, would you give me the power to overcome? And he will come through. If we are set apart through him, we'll be dead to sin. We'll be made alive through Christ. We won't strive to bear his fruit. We won't strive. It will be in our being. In us being who he's called us to be, we will start bearing the fruit. That's what I said. When he works through us, there are things that he kills that we kind of like have made as idols in our life. Oh, this is this the way I need it done my way. No, he'll start making us look through his eyes. When we read people who encountered Jesus, they came for a miracle, but they left back with salvation. They came and he often told them, sin no more. Because the healing that they received shouldn't cause them to go and sin. The healing that they received should be able to go back and say, God saved me. So maybe not take his grace for granted. His grace is sufficient. His grace causes me to see another day. His grace causes me to live in the purposes that he's called me to live out, but maybe not take it for granted. I want to pray specifically for those who are struggling in sin, who are like, you know what, I come to church on a Sunday, but on a Monday, I'm back to just doing what sin requires me to do. I pray for those of us who are married, will keep our marriage beds holy, 
for those of us who are married will keep our texts holy for those of us who are married will keep our eyes and our hands holy i pray for those who are single that you will live out the life that god's called you you don't have to test the surroundings and see if you know which will work best for you i love god to choose and he'll bring the right person in you are set apart through jesus it's a daily submission ish it's a daily submissive act of going to jesus and saying lord i'm submitted to your will and plan and purpose i'm set apart for you lord i don't want to give my carnal my my physical needs my my earthly desires my selfishness i don't want to feed that but i want to feed on you so that you can change me inside out the third thing is so we are set apart because of jesus we are set apart through jesus and we are set apart to remain in jesus and so one of the things that when we god sets us apart is so that we will remain in him we read in john chapter 15 verses uh 1 to 8 we read and there's this beautiful passage about jesus talking about the wine and we see how he talks that we have to remain in him the thing about remaining means you stay over a period of time and i wanted to read verse 5 and this is what it says from 5 on but yes i am the wine you are the branches those who remain in me and i in them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers such branches are gathered into a pile to be burnt but if you remain in me and my words remain in you you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted when you produce much fruit you are my true disciples this brings great glory to my father it's because we remain in him we are able to bear much fruits and mind you remaining in him is a much longer time and us bearing fruits is very seasonal we will need to remain in him for the longest of our life so that in seasons we are able to bear fruit we claim that we are set apart how we probably have the band that we are wearing or we have probably got the tag that we have or we have the calendar or we wear only christian t-shirts or we only buy from christian stores no you are set apart inside are you remaining in him a lot of us are remaining in other things a lot of us are remaining in the company of our spouse so much a lot of us are remaining in the family name that we have inherited so much a lot of us are remaining in the bank balances and the things that we need to pursue on jesus clearly says if you are going to be set apart from by me you can only serve two you can only you can't serve two masters you can only serve one master you soon have to make a decision who you are going to serve today are you serving jesus or are you serving money because money will cause you to make compromise on areas so that jesus becomes secondary things which are important you will diminish saying you know what i don't have the time you will justify yourselves and sooner or later you will start believing that when we remain in him he wants us to be an extension of his hands and feet and i don't know why but from the uh, from december of last year god's been emphasizing this word his extension of his hands and feet today the world needs his extension of his hands and feet and we as a church are very limited you as individuals are an extension in every area it might be like you're the only christian in your apartment or the only christian in your bay at the office cubicle be his extension there bring hope bring joy when you set apart and you're called to remain in jesus even if that increment doesn't come your joy is complete because you know jesus takes care of my tomorrow jesus will meet all my need my boss is not the one who actually determines it jesus allows my heart will be filled with gratitude today a lot of us are pursuing but when we pursue let's remember jesus has the final say he can either allow me to have it or he'll allow make sure that i don't have it 
Matthew 10 verse 1, it says, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and he gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. And I, the reason why I have taken that is when he called the 12, he gave them authority, it says. When we remain in him, we have authority. When we remain in him, we have his power. When we remain in him, we are able to claim his promises. When we remain in him, we realize our hands and feet are anointed. So when we pray, it says where two or three are gathered, he is there in our midst. That's why prayer is important. That's why the prayer of the saints is important. And I am believing that this year will be a year of supernatural miracles when we are set apart. When we, we remain in him, it won't happen in like how we feel like with all the fanfare. No, it will happen in the quietness when someone is next to you and being vulnerable and is saying, you know what, this is what I'm going through. And you don't have words. You don't have a life experience, to you, but you have only Jesus because you're remaining in him. When you start praying, you will see miracles happen. They will go out with the confidence of Jesus. They will operate with the joy of the Lord. They will see the breakthrough happen because of Jesus. Are we in it for the long haul? Because to remain in him is the most important thing. You know, you can't dilute. You can't uh, have a section. The one thing about Christian life is you can't compartmentalize. Your work, your family, my faith, no, everything is intertwined. Your faith has to go in alignment with your work. Your faith has to go in alignment with your family. A lot of times we feel, you know what, we can compartmentalize it. I can tell a couple of white lies here. Oh, I can fudge something here. No, one, it's not going to happen. Because anyway, I'm giving my tithes to God. No, you're dishonoring God. Take your faith and stand up for what is right. Choose. A lot of times we compromise because of the position that's been offered, because of the package that we have. God's calling us to be set apart so we can remain in him. As much as we remain in the world, we are called not to be of the world. So even as I said these three things, there's a call for us. A call for us is to take put things into action. What is a call for us? A call for us, the first thing is to build deep foundations. One of the things with following Jesus is you have to build deep foundations. If you come only on a Christmas, New Year and Easter, you're a shallow Christian. There's nothing uh, that's going to set you apart. There's nothing that's going to keep you in the center of his will. It's only when you allow Jesus to be part and parcel of your life every day, every hour, every minute is when you will be able to build deep foundations. And a lot of us are in this foundation stage. We are wanting to build a structure so that we'll be seen as established. We'll be seen as uh, doing well. We'll be seen as, you know what, we've got it all together. We'll be seen as, oh, okay, they are a happy couple. Oh, we'll be seen as, oh, they're good people. God doesn't care if you're good. God doesn't care if you're happy. God wants us to have deep foundations. He wants us to enjoy his joy. The joy that comes only from him. The more I talk about that, I realize that's the strength that God gives. The strength that God gives to wake up every day and to say the joy of the Lord is my strength. So let's read from Matthew chapter 6. A lot of us know this story for those of us who have been in Sunday school. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on the bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Whatever storms come our way, if you're not set apart because of Jesus, if you're not set apart through Jesus, and if we do not set apart and if you're not remaining in Jesus, what will happen is when storms come, storms will come for everyone. No one is devoid of storms. Sickness will come. Financial crunches will come. Relationship issues will come. Family struggles will come. Marital, you know, ego clashes will come. But if our anchor, if our foundation is in Jesus, if our foundation is in his word, if we've developed this constant uh, communication with him, of listening to him, to waiting on him, we will realize 
the, those storms will go past. A lot of us are happy when things are, you know, normal. But God saying that's not life. That's not life. The disciples had to be in the midst of a storm for, to know that only Jesus can calm the storm. One of my friends who I studied along, who's a worship leader, her name is Sarah, says this. She says this, to see a miracle, you need to be in a place where you're in need of a miracle. That's why I said the joy of the Lord has to be our strength. So when the Pharisees constantly bombarded Jesus, he pushed them saying, you are in the outwardly trying to please people. In the giving, he came and put a bag of offering, whereas there was a person, a widow who just came and put the two last coins that she had. When you fast, Jesus said, you go and fast, how? Where you make a big show out of it. But when a person who sinned comes, he says, God, I'm not worthy to be here. Deep foundations go and allow us to have deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. God wants us to have those deep foundations so that when trouble comes, when, um, when hardships come, we don't, we don't shake. You know, uh, this December, uh, with the floods happening in our city, water came into our ground floor. And, you know, I met a person and he said, you know what, I don't, I can't believe, uh, uh, you know, uh, how you, how you guys manage this. Honestly, for me, at the end of it, when I looked at that entire situation, more than the house, I had to be there for the community with the community people because we had to make sure certain things were done. Self-preservation does not really help. And many a times, that's where the goodness of people is. You don't have to actually be a Christ follower to talk about, to help people around. People who do not even follow Christ are helping each other out. But today, what happens when the life's bigger storms come? When your, when your wife gets rolled in and you're thinking, God, what is my future going to be? When you suddenly are sitting with a report and you don't know what to do. When suddenly you brought up your kids so well, but then when they go out, they see the world and they are enticed by the world and they fall for it and they are stuck in, uh, in a cycle of addiction. Your foundations have to be strong because you cannot crumble. You have to withstand the storm. And that happens when we are set apart by Jesus. He works in our deep foundations. When I serve, am I looking so that I get some praise? Or am I doing it because Jesus asks for me to do it and I love serving him? Let's not live for the crowd. Let's not live for the superficial. Let's not live for watchful eyes. But our call to live is for Jesus alone with deep foundations in his word, in his presence, in him. The second thing, the call for us to live in the wholeness of his word. A lot of us today as Christians, when we are set apart by Jesus, are, are trying to live in the technicality of his scripture. Oh, Jesus won't mind uh, if I if I do this because this is what the scripture says. you know. And for that, they are willing to go and do a deeper study. Trust the world in its trust the word in its entirety. One of the beautiful things that Paul goes on to tell is that don't be a stumbling block. And what he means is he says, Is your love for your brother far bigger that you're willing to give up certain comfort for yourself? I constantly tell uh, people around me, will we be okay to order veg food because two people are there veg and can we sacrifice uh, a meal of not eating non-veg just for the sake of them? It starts with small things like that. It starts with small things like that. And it moves on to bigger decisions that we take. Bigger decisions that we think, okay, you know what, culturally it's accepted there and this, we, we can justify, but what is God calling you to be set apart in? Because when he calls you to be set apart, you will not rely on the technicality of a scripture. You will rely on the wholeness of his word. A lot of false teachers today are going in the technicality of his word. They are going in the technicality of his word and are making sure that they take along many people. Read the scripture for what it is. Read for its intended meaning. When you read a scripture, even if you don't agree with what the scripture says, that's where you're allowing Jesus to set you apart through his word. His word will move through you. It will bombard the very thing that you think you have to be because culturally that what demands. Today we see 
what is it that he's asking you to live in the wholeness of his scripture he's saying it has to produce faith when we live in the wholeness of jesus word it has to produce faith We are not here for just the prosperity gospel. We are just not here to say, you know what, the Bible causes us to be prosperous. So I'll do the Jabez prayer. I'll do that. All that is good. But there's also a point when we are called to see that our Christian life will be entailed with suffering, will be entailed with hardships, because that's where our foundations matter. That's where we will, when we are seeing the wholeness, we see a God is a God of wholeness, not part. So don't believe in a part scripture. A lot of them are like, you know what? We are we want to experience the gold dust. But the truth is Christian life is going to be marked with persecution. A lot of us are thinking, you know what? We because we are following Jesus, we shouldn't fall sick. We shouldn't do that. We will fall sick and our trust will be in Jesus. When we close eyes here on earth, we will open and we will see him face to face. don't believe part scripture believe the whole of scripture in james chapter 1 verses 5 we read let anyone who asks wisdom let him ask but in verse 6 and 8 it gives caution this is what it says when you ask him be sure that your faith is in god alone do not waver for a person who with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind such people should not expect to receive anything from the word their loyalty is divided between god and the world and they are unstable in everything that they do the more i see a lot of people who are misleading other people in these technicalities they are doing it for their own ego they are doing it so that they alone will be made famous they are knowing it because if they do something like that is when people will talk about it there'll be a hype around them move away from that and believe the whole scripture as it is the whole scripture causes us to have a faith in god alone and no one else and you might say you know what they are doing miracles they are doing signs wonders the bible clearly says even the false prophets and the people who don't who worship other things can do those things read his word we are living in the last days this year is going to be a year where we are going to go deeper into seeing who Jesus wants us to be in this world we are going to be real christians what does that mean where we believe the whole scripture where we just don't live as meek christians we live in the authority that he's given us wherein when i come to church on a sunday i've been meditating this entire week and when i hear thy worship when i hear the word it's a confirmation of what i've been hearing from god that is how we should be living we come expectant into the house of god we don't come absent minded into the house of god we come expectant into the house of god so that we'll have a confirmation that this is what god is doing in and through my life we live under the authority of jesus the evidence of our faith comes because we know that jesus operated out of authority here on this earth he operated under authority he was under the authority of the father and that's why miracles after miracles happened and if we have to experience that in our own lives we need to be under his authority a lot of us are wanting to be under that authority of a pastor or of a prophet of a evangelist be under the authority of jesus in his right time it will work you know and uh, even as i was talking to team i was challenging them saying that you know what the centurion lived knowing the authority of jesus so that when he came to him he didn't expect him to come home he just said jesus say the word we will move into that supernatural realm where we'll be able to say jesus the authority that you've placed over my life is because i am in submission to your will and if this is under your will may we see it happen lord may we see healings happen because we believe in the wholeness of the scripture and even if we don't see it and if you marked it for us to go through this we will go through it joyfully because you will give us the strength that is what it is to live under the authority under authority means we live in a way of submission where we say god let not my will but your will be done Lord let not my plans but your plans be fulfilled through my life. Lord let not my ambition 
but your purposes be made complete lord let not my kingdom but your kingdom be established here on this earth the third thing which i want us to talk about is the call is to bear fruit and flourish as a tree i have been reading uh, this particular psalm time and again and this is what it says psalm 92 verses 12 to 15 but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of lebanon for they are transplanted to the lord's own house they flourish in the courts of our god even in old age they will still produce fruit they will remain white and green they will declare the lord is just he is my rock there is no evil in him when jesus is lord and savior of our life he sets us apart inside and the evidence of it is seen in the outside a lot of us want to see the evidence in the outside without allowing him to do the work in the inside what does what does that look like what does that look like it looks like they've lasted through seasons it looks like they've lasted through different life stages of life you know even as you see this picture you will see uh this picture of uh, a dear uncle who happens to be visiting our home for the last 16 years his name is uh, jay singh uncle and um, i don't know that uncle i got to know that uncle through my wife's family uh, and through my wife and she told me stories after stories of how he in fact came to our wedding and he was one of the pastors who was seated uh, there during the solemnization and one of the beautiful things that we i personally have seen and uh, so this pastor happens to be tina's grandfather's friend and so he's continued to just come into our life for the last 16 years every birthday of every one of us in the five fam in the five of us and in our wedding anniversary comes so many praise and one of the things that i've seen that's so evident in his life is the fact that he set apart inside and it's evident in the outside you know one of the ways in which he goes around is wearing the uh, the dress of a priest but when he talks in the last 16 years he shared so many things with us he encouraged us when we had to start the church he prayed with us when we had to find a place for our church and two years back he lost his wife i remember when he came to uh, pray for our wedding anniversary he was seated and he was crying that he was missing his wife that is what it means to bear fruit and flourish as a tree that is what it means to have a visible sign of god leading you into old age in fullness that is what he you know it was beautiful he he um he talked of how uh, they they both have been married at least probably over like uh, 50 years of marriage and he talks of how his wife prepared him for her death he talked of how he constantly encourages us of how to run things as a family he encourages us of how to lead our home of how to uh, deal with our kids how how to pray for our kids of how to pace ourselves in ministry and the beautiful thing that i've seen is that he's been through different seasons and he's lasted and so today as i finish this god wants us to last through every season he doesn't want us to have a premature death he sin will cause us to have that with with us not willing to live the life that we've called and taking on more than what we can we won't enjoy the life that god wants us to enjoy so today even as i close i just want to come back to those points as we talked about will we be set apart first because of jesus will we be set apart through jesus because that is a very painful process and will we choose to be set apart and remain in jesus the call is to build deep foundations so that we will last whatever comes in our life for his glory the call is to live the wholeness of his word that we won't just live for the watchful eyes of this world but we will live to please our audience of one and the call is to bear fruit and flourish as a tree one of the things it says in this verse is you can be cross planted and you will survive 
he says you'll be planted across different places and it says that you will still bear fruit. They will be transplanted to the Lord's own house. They will flourish in the court of our God, which requires us to stay. A lot of us today are struggling to be planted. I would encourage you, for those of you who are listening, be planted in one church. Be planted in a group of believers. Be planted in His Word. Be planted in Jesus every day so that you will last, you will run the race, and you will finish well. God's calling us to be faithful people of His kingdom. He doesn't want us to be famous people. He's saying good and faithful stewards, good and faithful servants. And so today, church, I want to encourage you that this journey that we're called to live is one of set, being set apart for Jesus. And in that, may we be intentional. May we not take His grace for granted. And may we live the life that He's called to its fullest, flourishing, remaining, so that we'll be a blessing wherever He's taking us. So can we just commit this word into God's hand that it will bear much fruit in our own lives. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Even as we heard your word, Lord Jesus, I just want to give you the glory and honor, Lord. We pray that, Lord, we thank you that you came down to this world. You obeyed the Father. You died for us, Lord Jesus. And because of you, we can see another day. Because of you, we can live to see your goodness. Because of you, we can see you clearly, Lord Jesus, in our lives. And I pray, Lord, we wouldn't take the day that we accepted you into our heart for granted. I pray, Lord, we are sorry if you've cheapened your grace, Lord. But I pray, would you work in and through our hearts? Would you work in and through our lives, Lord? We want you to be Lord and Savior of our lives. I pray we'll be set apart because of you, Lord. Because of you, Jesus Christ, who's a true and living God. We'll be set apart because we want you to work in and through us, Lord. Only you can work, Lord. No one else. You say, behold, I'm standing at the door and knocking. We allow you to come in, Lord. And help us to remain in you, Lord, that we won't have our eyes in other people's, in other areas and other things, but we will have our eyes in you. We will be content remaining in you, Lord Jesus. Go before us. Take charge. I pray you will strengthen each and every one of us, Lord. I pray especially as we step out this week that, Lord, we will learn to enjoy your presence. The joy of the Lord will become our strength. For those who need new mercy every morning, all of us need it. I pray specifically for those who are not asking for it. Would you come down and give them that new mercy, Lord Jesus? Go before us. Bless the food and water of our home. I pray we will be your salt and your light in this world. We will lead many to follow you, Lord. Go before us and strengthen us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So church, can I close today's service? May the love of the Father, the grace of His only Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I pray and charge you that even as you go out, you will live the call that God's called us to do. The call is simple. The call is to bear fruit and flourish as a tree. The call is to build deep foundations. And the call is to believe and live out the wholeness of his word. I pray that we will always look for Jesus to mold us and shape us wholly and not partly. I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray especially that even as you step out, you will be marked by him once and for all. That you won't allow sin to have power over you, but you allow Jesus to have the final say in and through your life. God bless you all. Church, as we heard, Jesus has set us apart for very specific things. And as you get into this week, our encouragement for you would be that you would meditate on all that you heard and that you would keep as your focus Jesus. No matter everything else that is happening around you, put aside the distractions, look to Him. He has called you, He has marked you for something. If you would spend time asking Him, Lord, what have you marked me for? What have you set me for? Set me apart for Jesus, it couldn't have been for nothing. If you would take that time, I believe that your year will look different. Not just this week, your year is going to look different. So remember this church that as you get into this week, 
that you would look to Jesus for everything. More importantly, remember that whoever finds Jesus finds life. Have an amazing week. God bless you.